Hey, what's going on guys? Fusion is an interoperability layer one blockchain that has been around for a very long time. But for some reason, I hadn't heard much about it. You know, you've got Thorchain and others that are doing cross chain. So why hasn't Fusion been in the conversation? I just recorded a video on Change, which is the main dApp that is built on top of Fusion. If you wanna watch that video, I'll leave a link down in the description. In this video, I really wanna focus on Fusion, which is the layer one that makes all that interoperability and cross-chain swapping possible. So let's get into that. I'm gonna talk about what it is, the team, tokenomics, what's coming up, my concerns, final thoughts, and more. But please do keep in mind, none of this is for financial advice. It's for educational purposes only. Do your own research, and I'm not getting paid to make this video. So what is it? It is a, like I said, it's a layer one blockchain founded in 2017, so it's been six years. An interoperability chain built for finance and uses what they call the DCRM, which is Distributed Control Rights Management. And that's what they call their core technology. It allows users to swap native assets like Bitcoin for Ethereum for BNB. It's mostly open source. Obviously, complete open source is the best it can get. Although they, the secret sauce to how this whole thing works is not open source, and there is a patent pending for that technology. The CEO and founder is DJ Kwan. He's got some really cool interviews on YouTube. You want to check him out. He's not very active on there. It's only like every few years or so. So maybe he's just heads down building, which is fine. Uh, their team on the website is just these four. They do have some advisors, but they just list these four here. So you've got Josie Jang, Guo Cheng Zhu, and Zhao Jun He. But I will say the website, some of it is outdated. For example, the roadmap, it only goes back to Q4 2021. So because that's not updated, I'm not even sure if this is actually the current team. One of the biggest features they have is this time lock mechanism. So it allows you to lock up tokens or NFTs for different periods of time and get the yields for those. So in Fusion, they call these lockups time slices and they will be designated with a TL for the time lock. So if you were to time lock some USDT, for example, you would get back a version called TL USDT. For coins, you can think of this like liquid staking. If you were to lend out some FSN tokens to the protocol, they are going to stake those or even Ethereum. They're gonna go and stake those Ethereum or FSN tokens to my understanding, and then they'll pay you a portion of those staking yields. For NFTs, it adds a little bit more flexibility here. So with the time slices, you might be able to rent out real estate, for example, with the NFTs. So you have permission, say for six months, it's time locked and then automatically through decentralized escrow, ownership is given back to the property owner and it just happens sort of automatically. And like we said, probably biggest use case, at least right now, is that change protocol which facilitates cross-chain swaps. And from change, there's 75 integrated chains and over 4,000 plus assets. And I just picked A0 in Bitcoin there, for example. You could swap those. Pretty cool. The DCRM looks like this visually. So you've got Bitcoin's blockchain here, right? And then you've got the Ethereum blockchain here. Fusion is the layer one that facilitates the native swaps, the native transfer of that from wallet to wallet. The big question though is how are these assets being secured? Because there are pools on the protocol for each one of those assets. From their documentation, next gen custodian with its characteristics of interoperability and security, DCRM is ultimately a custodian that secures assets like cold wallet custody, transacts with the liquidity and hardwareless setup like hot wallets, and protects the multi-party sign-offs and recovery. Protects with multi-party sign-offs and recovery. And then I found this interesting here, this line. This custodian model can be employed as a trusted network across parties such as banks and their customers to allow for efficient transactions or as a single secure solution for individual banks. They do use TSS, which stands for Threshold Signature Schema, meaning no single entity has access to the whole private key for signatures. But who, who manages the bridge and handles that custody? Like basically, who, who, who are the nodes and validators that are watching over this whole thing? That would be the DCRM Alliance. And right now, it is permissioned. You are not, you or I are not able to be anonymous and then come in and run a consensus node for Fusion. So we have here 
At the end of 2019, simultaneously as Fusion announced the release and consequent open sourcing of DCRM 5.0, the DCRM Alliance was announced. A group of DeFi players and protocols, fintech companies, enterprises, government, and academia that will join forces. So a bunch of centralized institutions are the ones that are guarding these assets. And this from one of their community members when I was researching the project. Yeah, the setup isn't even fully public, but there's some rumors that it's going to be changing with Change 2.0. DJ's recent recruitment of Zenyu could relate to that, but it's not public info for now. And then I proposed a question over on Twitter about permissionless, permissionlessness. Is it possible, let's go to the tweet here, can a project claim to be decentralized if running consensus nodes is permissioned? 25% said yes and 75% said no. So it's gonna depend on your thoughts there. If you have alliance members that are doxxed in their enterprises and they have to be compliant and they're the ones that are deciding who gets to come into the club essentially, could it, is it really considered decentralized? With these nodes being permissioned and institutions, right? My main, my main concerns and questions are, what incentive do the nodes have to play fair and to not steal? Currently, the nodes are known, so there's potential reputation damage and legal recourse. But with this setup, could the protocol stay censorship resistant if nodes don't have any financial, any, any risk of financial loss? So it's not necessarily economically secured by this alliance, right? It's mostly reputation damage and possible um, law recourse. And I just don't know me personally if that would be enough. Now let's get to this FSN coin itself. There's about, if you look at the difference between the total supply, max supply here, and the circulating supply, it's about seven and a half million emissions left for staking rewards, for securing the chain. All the coins are to be thought of as in circulation. There's about 40 years left for emissions. And I'm not telling you they should be thought of like that. That was what was told to me. So there's no ICO distribution transparency here. I was looking for like one of those pie charts, like how much went to the team, how much went to seed investors, how much went to marketing, operations, you know, all of that kind of information. And I couldn't find that at all, which is kind of alarming. That's usually what I see when I research projects. You know, you get the initial distribution, you'll get an emission schedule, things like that. That's all sort of missing here. And it is ranked 755 on the rank and it's got, it's a market cap of 15 and a half million. So I think if they wanted to get, this is just my opinion, but an easy thing for them to maybe get, uh, you know, some more traction here is to release that information so that people can decide their own thoughts on that initial distribution. Because in my opinion, the lack of transparency sort of makes you wonder. There's also no way to get accurate information about the top holders of the FSN token. The stake tokens aren't counted in the Explorer, so that was pretty much pointless. The ecosystem has one dApp on it. It used to have AnySwap, which became multi-chain, which recently blew up, right? So right now you've just got Change, which has $160 million in TVL, which I suppose is pretty good. And like I already said, if you wanna check out that review, there's a link in the description. The Fusion website is getting a complete overhaul, I'm told. And this is gonna be part of the roadmap when that new website launches. And I'm told that's supposed to be in Q3 this year. So it's gotta be coming up in the next month and a half or so. On there, a Q3, Change 2.0. So it's gonna be Fusion's new website and Change. Fusion margin trading module, refinement of FSN scan, that Explorer, and a social media strategy, which I am right now not a part of. This is just a video I'm doing because I'm curious about interoperability protocols. Q4, they've got cross-chain NFT contracts and direct access to fiat, so that should be interesting. My final thoughts on this, that change protocol, which is their main dApp, it does have a great UI and in, in user experience. The coins, also these FSN to coins, they're almost totally circulating. I think that's like 10, a little less than 10% out there over 40 years, so there's not gonna be huge sell pressure from emissions. The cons though, it requires a lot of guessing. It's got a questionable security model, at least in my opinion, permission nodes, which goes into that, and partially closed source. All of that is kind of lumped all together. What do you guys think of Fusion? Is this going to be an interoperability player in the future? If you're still here, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you on the next video.